Okay, let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Gelov, and I am a principal developer at Progress. I've been with the company for six years now, and since the start, I've been working on our .NET-based CMS called Sitfinity. Uh, my latest, uh, our latest features uh, that I've been working on include uh, the uh, REST APIs exposed via all data and uh, the new content management uh, interface. So everything here is closely related to today's topic, which is make your head, make your web with Setfinity headless. And uh, let's see what we'll be talking about today. Uh, we'll define uh, first what is a CMS. We'll do a comparison between the two uh, mostly popular uh, CMS in the web today. And uh, finally, we'll do a demo uh, about how we handle uh, this headless scenario with Setfinity. So uh, let's define what is a CMS. Uh, basically, a CMS is an application that enables non-developers to uh, write uh, websites. Um, with a little effort, such uh, examples include WordPress, Sitecore, Kentico, maybe you've heard of them. But in today's world, uh, in the web, there are two terms that are mostly used, and they are the two types of CMSs out there. So we define two types of CMSs, uh, traditional and headless. Let's see what the traditional CMS looks like. Uh, the traditional CMS is uh, maybe the most uh, widely spread CMS out there. Um, uh, we have uh, a single large monolithic application that, gets, that handles uh, mostly everything. It's responsible for the content editing uh, uh, user interface, uh, it hosts the user interface actually, it's responsible for rendering the uh, HTML and uh, responsible for handling all kinds of data. So here, um, a non-developer persona can come and create a website with little effort. If things get uh, a little complicated, then a developer might jump in and provide some functionality. However, uh, this uh, traditional... Hello. Uh, this traditional uh, CMS has some limitations, one of them being that the, the representation is uh, limited to desktop uh, computers and uh, users, uh, uh, users who are with mobile devices, smart watches, smart refrigerators cannot uh, uh, get a hold of the content that's on the CMS. Uh, there are some implementations with uh, responsive design and uh, this enables mobile applications and tablets to view the content as well. So let's define what are some pros and cons here. Uh, the pros being that it's very easy to use. It has low, low entry barriers for developers. If you have a team of PHP developers and the CMS is written in PHP, you can basically just uh, jump start. Uh, one of the greatest advantages here is that uh, you have uh, what you see is what you get uh, layout editor uh, that enables these non-marketing, non-developer personas to uh, build websites without developers. Um, but uh, one of the biggest drawbacks here uh, is that the uh, is that the presentation that the, um, the presentation layer is uh, is not uh, multi-channel. We deliver content only for uh, desktop computers, and we skip out skip out on the one of the uh, mostly widespread. Uh, uh, devices like uh, mobile devices. Uh, we are coupled and we are writing in a CMS specific language, C sharp, PHP, whatever the uh, CMS provides. We cannot experiment with new technologies like Angular, React, and other uh, nice and good front end frameworks. Uh, another big disadvantage is, is, is that it is responsible for uh, rendering and data at the, at the same time. So the server is uh, handling both of these responsibility, uh, responsibilities, which is not uh, an easy task. So let's uh, take a look at the new kit on the block, the headless uh, CMS. It solves some of the issues of the traditional CMS, but also has, has uh, some limitations. We will view them in a short moment. 
So here instead, uh, here one of the things that we notice is that, we, that the presentation layer is no longer in the CMS itself. Instead, we have an API. Uh, this is a generic API that's available for any device to consume. It will be typically a REST API. And here, uh, the flow is as follows. The marketing uh, user goes and creates some content on the CMS. This content resides in, the single place, in a single place in the CMS itself. And then the developer goes and writes some uh, presentation layers uh, on different mobile, uh, on different uh, devices. So this is a rough summary of, uh, this is a rough representation of what uh, headless CMS looks like. Let's see the pros and cons here. So uh, these uh, headless CMS tend to be future proof uh, because they allow for, uh, allow, mo allow other devices to connect to them and uh, connect to the API. So we can define them as cross-platform is we can write in any language on any platform and uh, uh, expose the presentation layer there. Uh, they're written uh, API first, so everything is based on the API, everything, uh, uh, all of the content is served to the API. They are decoupled, uh, the content and the representation layer are separated, so there are no, there is no coupling uh, of the, there is no polluting of the uh, data or the API. Uh, users can reach a faster time to market if, uh, for example, they have uh, a, a campaign that or they, they have a target that uh, uh, wants uh, the first application to be available for mobile devices, then on desktop, then on smartwatch, everything <coughs> can be delivered separately. Uh, there's extra security with the headless CMS as uh, we, can, uh, we can exclude the backend user interface from the uh, public facing uh, portal and then we have and then we would achieve a lower attack lower surface of attack uh, these uh, cms are scalable and quite performant they fit quite well in the uh, how was the term uh, okay never mind they are very they are, they can scale easily and perform uh, one of the biggest drawbacks here is that uh, they have they do not have a layout editor, so non marketing non uh, so marketing users cannot have quick quick feedback on what they've uh, uh, created. They have to view it on uh, separate application. Um, so this is about it for the headless CMS. Uh, if we compare them, basically the pros of the one kind of CMS tend to be the cons of the other and vice versa. And when choosing uh, one of these uh, CMSs, uh, there is actually really not uh, a, a, a right answer here. Um, it depends really on your business needs. If uh, you'd like more marketing persons to develop uh, marketing persona to develop your website, you could maybe switch to traditional. Uh, but like I said, headless are future-proof as they expose an API and this uh, API can be consumed by almost everything and the representation can be written on any uh, platform. So now that we've defined uh, what's uh, uh, headless and traditional CMS, we can make a demo. Uh, for the demo, I will use uh, Sitefinity and uh, I will showcase a site called Quantum. Uh, this uh, site Quantum is um, uh, for a digital agency that uh, provides services for uh, marketers and uh, developers. So here on the screen we can see the uh, desktop presentation and the mobile mobile presentation. Uh, uh, let's go into details of how the demo will go. Uh, here we have um, uh, Sitfinity being the CMS that exposes the API, and we have a marketer that is going to. Uh, I'm going to walk in as a marketer that is going to create some content and it will. And the marketer will view the content, and then we'll view the content on the desktop and the mobile uh, application. Um, let's attempt to start the demo. Mm. 
So I have a Setfinity site, the quantum site here, like I said. And here I have my content. Uh, these are some uh, news items here. And here I have some categorizations of these uh, items. So uh, first thing we need to set up our scenario is our uh, services. Uh, it's very easy to create services with Setfinity. Uh, our services are based on uh, old data, which is uh, a framework for uh, building KPIs. It's a Microsoft framework. It's a, it's a very easy to use framework, and it's very suitable for our uh, context as all of our content is dynamic. And with just a few, few clicks, I can expose uh, a new uh, service without writing, z with, with writing zero code. So I've already done that, uh, and I have a quantum mobile service that exposes all of my content on uh, the website. And I'll just show you how easy it is to get around. I will request the service page. And here I can see all of the content that's available. It, since it's all data and I have all of the content here, I just need to add another segment and I can get a hold of what I need. And uh, here are all my news items. So we have our first uh, and, uh, and important part. Uh, we have the uh, API. Uh, this API is uh, consumed by our uh, application. By, uh, this API is consumed uh, by our uh, mobile application and that I can show now. And it's consumed by, uh, and it's not consumed by the desktop client actually. The desktop client is on the uh, desktop is entirely CMS based currently. Um, so uh, I want to show you our new content management UI that uh, has the same that where we can uh, edit the content that uh, uh, we see on the uh, fr front end. So uh, we have a quantum photo, cost, photo contest item here, and we have the same here. We have the same uh, quantum photo contest item in, uh, I think, Oops. it's an emulator, so it's a bit slow. Sorry. Uh, I think it's in marketing. So I have the same item here. So now what I'll demonstrate is how uh, I, as a content editor, log in and can easily change something. I'll change, for example, the title here. And I'll publish it. Then when I go to the front end, I will be able to view the updated item. So here I can see that the item is updated, and I can see that the mo mobile application is updated as well. So uh, me as a simulating a marketer, I have uh, walked in, created or edited some content, and now it's available multi-channel to a device, to uh, a desktop client, whatever the business needs are. Uh, so that's about for the demo. Uh, it's quite easy. Uh, <coughs> so to summarize what we've learned today, we uh, defined what's a traditional, what's a headless CMS, and we showcased an example using Setfinity of on how to implement a Setfinity as a headless CMS and provide seamless multi-channel experience across devices. So having that in mind, are there any questions? Okay. Ah, one question. Okay. So the mobile application part, the mobile. So the mobile application is built with native script. 
and it leverages the audit uh, RESTful services. Well, the front end currently in this example is not an Angular application. It can be, uh, it can be, but it's entirely uh, C sharp based with uh, MVC widgets that uh, the framework, pro the CMS provides. Yes. Um, there are some benchmarks on the site. I cannot say exactly what. I think we provide with each release some white papers that uh, have uh, that that list the performance there for the Cfinity. But I I'm not sure if we have comparisons for to other CMSs. Perhaps not. But if you are interested in the performance of the old data services, they are fast, reliable, and uh, easy to use. More questions? There's not enough, because uh, I've been dealing with that, there's not enough documentation in all data. Maybe it's a good idea you make one. Uh, because for a lot of stuff, if I want to query um, a lot of uh, IDs, for example, there's, like, I cannot find one example of that in the CMS. Uh -huh. Well, since, since we are based on all data, we relied that uh, uh, we, uh, the, since all data is documented on a separate site and the protocol is documented on a separate site, uh, we thought that this would be that would be self-explanatory uh, for the end user. But uh, we have a Postman demo uh, where all of the uh, uh, where some of the queries are listed. Have you tried that? <laughs> Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just. All about it anyway, so <laughs> okay. Okay. More questions. Okay. Then with that we can end our session, and thank you.